Before I start, there's something I should clarify as soon as possible. J1407b is not a super Saturn planet with rings. I've made several videos about why it isn't before, most notably why did everyone fall for the J1407b myth. To put it simply, J1407b is likely what's essentially a small-scale star system. It's a brown dwarf surrounded by a debris disk of material where new planets are actively forming. A disk is a very different structure from a planetary ring. Rings like Saturn's are formed in many ways, like when a moon passes into a planet's Roche limit and is destroyed. A disk forms as the planet or object forms out of leftover material. So I don't consider J1407b's disk a planetary ring system. It's a ring in shape, but it's not a ring like the ones the gas giants have. It's much more analogous to the protoplanetary disks that form around young star systems, or an asteroid belt. J1407b is not a super Saturn, as not only is its disk not comparable to Saturn's rings, it's most likely not a planet, instead being a brown dwarf or sub-brown dwarf. Don't get me wrong, this is still extremely interesting. There are likely several planets forming in J1407b's disk, including a potential Venus-sized object, which there's slight evidence for based on a gap in the disk. Just because J1407b isn't a planet with really big rings doesn't make it any less cool. It's just not exactly what it's been described as. For further information, I have a few papers linked in the description that explain this better, and also a whole playlist on my channel about J1407b. In past videos, I haven't been as clear about this as I should have, so I'll emphasize this here as well. J1407b is still a real object that exists, but J1407b, a super Saturn planet with large rings, is inaccurate. There are also a few other objects similar to J1407b we've discovered, like Assassin 21 JSB, a J1407b analog with an even larger debris disk, which is again talked about on my J1407b playlist. But anyways, the other thing I talk about on my channel in addition to exoplanets is space colonization. I mostly stick to the solar system, but every once in a while I like to make one about colonizing exoplanets. And one of my favorite videos is talking about how you could mine diamonds on the planet Janssen, which you might know as 55 Cancri E. So I thought it would be fun to talk about colonizing one of the objects I talk about the most, J1407b. J1407b is currently around 450 light years away from Earth, which is over 10 times further away than Janssen and the 55 Cancri system. This large distance makes it unlikely to be reached by humanity anytime soon. For reasons I cover in other videos that I'll skip here, I believe interstellar travel is more than possible, but travel faster than light is not. So with realistic advancements in technology, only the closest stars are reachable within a non-altered human lifespan. Meaning for us to even get to J1407b in the first place, one of a few things must happen. One, we invent radical life extension and make humans essentially immortal, making the millennia-long travel to J1407b possible. Two, we just wait until we've colonized all the nearby stars and just slowly, naturally make our way toward it, which could take tens of thousands of years. Or three, we send robotic spacecraft with the instructions on how to build a colony, with no humans on board whatsoever. No matter what scenario happens, colonies around J1407b will be extremely different and unpredictable compared to any society that exists on Earth. At minimum, it'll be a few centuries before this happens. At max, hundreds of thousands of years. That's a lot of time for human culture to fundamentally and radically change. Maybe by then we've all been assimilated into a super-intelligent AI, or have become immortal genetically engineered gods out to conquer the universe. So it's obviously pretty difficult to make any concrete predictions. So I'll be talking vaguely about what makes J1407b a unique place to colonize, and how it could be used generally, which should apply to any civilization or entity trying to colonize space. J1407b is two major things that make it unique its disk of material, and its distance from the star V1400 Centauri. J1407b's disk is about 90 million kilometers wide in radius and 130,000 miles thick. While extremely small compared to stellar protoplanetary disks, that's a pretty incredible amount of material. And it's all just free-floating right there. No gravity well means you don't have to land anywhere to mine it. Just pilot your ship into a stable orbit and scoop up whatever you need, potentially even easier than asteroid mining. Because J1407b is not yet old enough for its disk to have formed into a complete planetary system, it should have a lot of useful material that's usually caught up in the cores of planets. Dense elements like iron and nickel, for example. J1407b has a lot of valuable, easily accessible material, which could make it a good target for colonization. That being said, J1407b could potentially be around 20 million years old, though it's just an assumption based on the nearby sun-like star, V1400 Centauri. V1400 Centauri is a star 97% the mass of the Sun and 6% wider than it, which is extremely young. In 2007, we saw the star be eclipsed by an object surrounded by a large disk of material, J1407b. 
Because of this, we thought for a while that J1407b was orbiting the star. However, based on how long the transit lasted, we could guess at how long the object's orbital period was. So we could predict when it would transit again. And every time we looked, it wasn't there. Records of the star go back to the 1800s, and there's no mention of an eclipse that should have been detectable even back then. This rules out every possible orbit for J1407b, and means that it's most likely a rogue object that coincidentally passed very close to V1400 Sen. Close encounters like this are extremely rare, and could suggest that J1407b and V1400 Sen formed in the same area around the same time, which is somewhat expected. Stars form in clusters, and the leftovers can form brown dwarfs and rogue planets. We don't currently know where J1407b is, it was lost after the 2007 transit. However, an image taken by the Alma Observatory may have found it in 2017, though this is yet to be confirmed, as it could have just been an unrelated background object. But if confirmed, this image shows that J1407b is rapidly moving away from V1400 Sen, though it's still decently close. Which is interesting, because infrared measurements of V1400 Centauri suggest it lacks a significant protoplanetary disk. As far as I can tell, we don't currently know why, but that could indicate that either V1400sen doesn't have a planetary system, or maybe it's already somehow finished forming. Though that's just speculation on my end, as I haven't actually seen any papers suggesting the existence of planets in V1400sen, except for J1407b. But no matter what, J1407b's flyby of the system, when it came less than 5 AU away from the star, probably messed everything up. If the ALMA image is actually J1407b, then it's likely somewhere around 6 Jupiter masses, which is large enough to significantly disturb any planetary system v 1400 Sen had, if it had one to begin with. For comparison, 5 AU is about where Jupiter is, meaning if it were around the Sun, J1407b would have passed through and likely destroyed the inner solar system, including Earth. So just based on that, I personally consider it unlikely that v 1400 Sen is any large planets in the inner system, and maybe even in the outer system. But again, speculation on my part. Which means, if you're trying to colonize the space around V1400sen, then J1407b is probably going to be your main resource mine. Close enough to be reachable from V1400sen, not so far as to make it too much of a hassle. The system probably has asteroids and maybe small planets, but it's likely easier to mine a disk. Because of this, J1407b kind of becomes V1400 Centauri's equivalent of Earth's moon. A relatively small and distant object, but filled to the brim with easily accessible resources. V1400 Sen likely has some amount of material you can use, but depending on how much, it might just be easier to make the journey out to J1407b instead of searching for, in comparison, relatively scarce asteroids or larger objects. Which also brings up the topic of planets around J1407b itself. While this is nowhere near confirmed, we do know a large gap exists in the object's disk. This could indicate the presence of a young planet somewhere around the size of Mars or Venus orbiting J1407b. But again, that's not actually known, the only evidence for its existence is a gap where its orbit would be. But assuming that planet does exist, there's nothing stopping smaller objects from existing here as well. J1407b's disk has several noticeable gaps that could be filled by small dwarf planets or larger asteroids. These planets, if they exist, would likely be bombarded with frequent impacts and not very livable, but they are pretty interesting. If you for some reason want to live on a planet, J1407b might have them. But for everyone else, you can just build large space habitats out of the disk material, which can spin for artificial gravity and have the total living space of a small country, allowing millions of people to live in them comfortably. Of course, living inside a protoplanetary disk, meteorite impacts are going to be a concern. Luckily, there's no shortage of material. Just build thicker hulls, and that's your meteor problem solved. V1400 Centauri is a member of the Scorpius Centaurus Association, a group of a few hundred young stars of similar age, including some pretty well-known stars like the Red Giant and Teres. It's a pretty typical young star cluster, with hundreds of stars all the same age and moving in the same direction. We know of a ton of clusters like this, from the Pleiades to the Hyades to the Beta Pictoris moving group. Stars in clusters like these, especially toward the center, can be pretty close together, and there's also a ton of rogue planets. As of 2021, there are at least 70 rogue planets in this cluster. Of course, being surrounded by stars larger than it that, unlike V1400 Sen, actually do have significant protoplanetary disks, J1407b stops seeming so appealing. Why would you settle for a small brown dwarf when you could go for the larger stars, which have larger disks of material? When compared to other stars nearby, J1407b just doesn't seem like a really high priority target for colonization. That being said, it still has a lot of resources, just not nearly as many as the other systems also part of the cluster. 
it's still going to be very useful and a good place to go if all the better spots have already been claimed. It could act as the main resource hub and jumping off point for the colonization of the V1400 Centauri system, though it is getting further away and the value diminishes the longer we wait. If we wait a few hundred thousand years, then it's probably moved too far away from V1400 Sen to be of any use and it just becomes another small brown dwarf among the hundreds the Scorpius Centaurus Association has. There's even some slight evidence that J1407b isn't even a member of the association, from again that one unconfirmed Alma image. If confirmed to be J1407b, its movement suggests it's just passing through the cluster and isn't an actual member. So, all in all, J1407b is a rogue brown dwarf with a large disk of material around it. Disks like it are perfect places for mining, as they haven't had time to fully form into planets, meaning there's a lot more material there that would otherwise be locked away in places like planetary cores. The star V1400 Centauri is also currently very close to J1407b, which, depending on how much it screwed up that system when it passed through, could maybe have a few planets or resources to collect. So assuming we get there quickly, before it moves too far away to be useful, J1407b could be a great place to mine and collect resources to help us both colonize it and the V1400 Sen system. However, J1407b is surrounded by the bigger Scorpius Centaurus Association, a collection of young stars that have even bigger protoplanetary disks, with even more resources to collect. So, should we ever begin colonizing this place, I'd expect J1407b to be mostly ignored, because there's simply much better targets nearby. But it's still an interesting place that may even have other planets orbiting around it, and depending on what direction it's moving, might not be in the association for very long. So it might be a good place to set up colonies if all the other, larger stars have been taken. Who knows, maybe one day people will call J1407b, the ring planet that never was, their home. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.